so first, man, nobody knows who you are in the Chicagoland area. So you got to introduce yourself, man. You got to tell us who you are and where you're from. All right, man, simply put, man, from Chicago. But if you're from Chicago, you know, you just can't just say I'm from Chicago. You know what I mean? So I'm from the west side of Chicago, baby. You know what I mean? So that's that's where I'm from, from the west side, from the L-Town, K-Town, all of that, you know. And, uh, man, growing up in that spot, man, it's, whew, you know, moms didn't let me go outside. I'm just telling you like that. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't let you go outside. Why not? Uh, you said it. Man, she, she didn't want me to uh, be taken by the streets, man. It's, okay. It was rough out there. It was rough out there. You know, a lot of my friends, man, got taken took by the streets. You know what I mean? Not saying they they down and out, but, uh, uh, you know, it, is, it ain't looking too good for them right now. So, yeah. Man, so you, you, you was born and raised in, in, on the west side? West side, man. Yeah. West side. side. All right, so you went to grammar school there. You went public school, CPS? Man, public school, man. I went, you know, I was going back and forth when my mom could afford private school. That's the year you was in when she couldn't. You know what I'm saying? That's the year you was out. You know what I mean? So I went to public school up until like fourth. My mom used to have to like come to school. I didn't have enough. They didn't have enough dictionaries there. They was hidden in the back. My mom told me, hey, bust this out. Bring these to the classroom. So, you know, we was two, two dictionaries, a kid, single file, going to the storage room, back into this room, back into our room, just to have dictionaries. So it was it was crazy to my mom finally said, hey, you know, we got a little bit of money. Let's go over here to St. Mary the Angels. People out here who know St. Mary the Angels, you know, say on the north side, uh, you see it off the uh, what's it, uh, the 94 Expressway. So brought me over there. I learned that I was only reading at like a, a fifth grade level, you know, and I was supposed to be uh, uh, in seventh grade. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? Some public school. So. They, they, they had me, they demoted me. So I wasn't going to go into uh, seventh grade. I had to go into sixth grade until I proved myself on a roll to get into seventh grade. It's crazy. Man, that's that public school. That's that CPS private school difference, man. You, yeah, wow. yeah. Man, so then you you graduated in elementary school eventually. <laughs> and then you um, go- here, here, here's, a, here's another little twist, man. They did me in. You know, I don't know if someone was brother. I was a brother at the school. You know, my first time ever hitting the honor roll, the first time, and I hit the honor roll ever uh, uh, before, before then. Oh, he, he forgets. Principal forgets. Oh, we forget. Uh, what? What are you talking about? Huh? Italian guy. I was like, okay, all right, cool. So I ended up just playing it all out, man. Playing it all out. She couldn't pay. Uh, no, no. I ended up playing it all out. And once I played it all out, I, uh, she wanted me, I didn't want to, um, you know, start high school late. So my mom, she she got to thinking. So she uh, went to, what is that school? Providence St. Mel. So she, if you know Providence St. Mel, so the way you get into there is you got to test in. You know what I mean? So she ended up taking me over to Providence St. Mel. I tested. I mean, the first, the first test I did, boom, ninth grader. <laughs> so hey. I just skipped the whole, I didn't even go to eighth grade, bro. I wow, skipped no eighth grade, no grad. You're right. So you you legit didn't graduate. You didn't even get a graduation at all, at all. <laughs> <laughs> you said the system got you early, Joseph. Like you like man, play the game early. Man, you got me early, man. Like you said, man. So. so then you go to high school, right? You in a private high school? How that go? Like you you get through all four years? Uh. Yeah, man, money tough, man. Money was tough. <laughs> so I was there, you know, and Pops was there, you know, he was there here and there, you know what I mean? He was, he was, I, I knew him, you know. Uh, you know, I did electric jobs with him and stuff like that to pay for some some of the school, some of the school months, you know what I mean? So, but it was a it was a point, you know, got got kids behind you, you know. <laughs> so we gotta we gotta sit out. We went to the next best thing, was the charter school. Uh charter school was called uh North Lawndale College Prep. You may know them. You know, so I was there, uh, what's it, 08, 09, graduated in 09, man. I, I loved it there because they had uh, media, they had a media class, Free Spirit Media, the uh, After School Matters program. I stayed after school, like, you know, it's 3.30, I'm here to 4.30, trying to figure out motions and, and final cut and different things like that, bro, so. Yeah, and is, is that what you wanted to do? Like, like you was like high school, you picked up the media, you were just like, that's what I want to do when I. Yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, media, Anything dealing with media, bro. I was, you know what I'm saying? I was, uh, I don't know if you heard of Hoops High. I was a yeah. uh, director over there at Hoops High. You know, take this angle. Take camera one. Take camera. I'll 
I did that. I was behind the scenes. I got some cameras. I mean, I got some pictures to prove it. You know, yeah. <laughs> I just said it. You know what I mean? But uh, that was the direction I wanted to go to Full Sail University in Florida. That was my that was my goal. My mm -hmm. mom said, "Nope, it's too oh. far." Oh, crush me! I used to get the the catalogs that I was like, "Mom, look the the guy who produced Little Wayne's Carter Three went to this school." Like the executive producers, like these dudes. Nah. Nah, you ain't going out. Uh, uh, too far. So, <laughs> so then what, what happened? What, 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 and um, in school, man, I was always doing business stuff. Uh, we I, That's why, again, I, I'll go back to uh, North Lawndale. Great. You know what I'm saying? Uh, probably say man was more, you know, liberal, become a, you know, uh, attorney, doctor type type thing. You know what I mean? Lawyer or something like that. I liked, I liked, uh, probably, I mean, North Lawndale because it was more, you know, like, uh, you know, workshop, you know, media. It was so many different out outlets that you can go in. So we had a business class as well. Me and my man, me and my man's developed. Uh, uh, it's called Heavy Addiction, and uh, we started we started a Heavy Addiction business, and where we would uh, set up venues to do poetry slams and things like that. We was part of Loud in the Bond for a little minute too as well. And so we set up little uh, venues called Heavy, uh, Heavy Addiction. Uh, I was Mr. Heavy. He was Mr. Addiction. We kind of had this little thing we was going, going over with. And so from that, we built a, we built a, um, we had the business plan. We had to make a business plan in that class. And if it was good enough, the teacher would start to invest in our business. And so that's where we started to take off. And we just started to go to bigger venues. And uh, I used that to springboard a uh, full scholarship at, uh, uh, was that? At, uh, uh, was that? Saluki, what is that? Uh, Southern. <laughs> uh, Carbondale, Carbondale, Carbondale. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I put that on my application. You know, of course, during that process, you got to send out a whole bunch of applications. And that was one of the places I sent out. I, of course, I, you know, put that on there. I, you know, had a business plan and we did so many different things with it. And so, man, Hey, I got a scholarship. I had a single room scholarship, bro. Like it was, it was crazy. See, I was in there just by myself chilling. And look, uh, Southern Illinois. That's what you said. He said, look, you man, that's look. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So man, full ride scholarship down south. Like, and so what, what was it for? for? For media? It was for communications. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I had I was uh working at I had I had it going good, man. I had I was doing. I was doing freaking uh, internships at law firms. I was doing a lot of good stuff, man. But at the right before I left off to college, I was at Coca Cola in the warehouse right there on Cicero at like Vision, if you know what I'm talking about. Right there, I was doing that for a minute, being a picker, and uh, I wasn't even gonna go. Like cause I was so sad, I couldn't go to full sale, man. I was like, Ugh, I just I'm gonna just do this until I go to Wilbur Wright or something like that, man. It's like my dreams are gone. So. <laughs> That letter came in and said, hey, bro, you basically got a full ride. You know what I mean? You know, here how much extra we're going to give you uh, for this uh, scholarship program. And it basically pays for your books and it paid for me a, a single room. So cool. <laughs> OK, I guess I'm going to college. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm out of here. You yeah. know what I mean? Whatever. I'm, I'm going to make it do what it do. So I, I took communications and, and, and whatnot. And uh it, it started good. I was at a good, I was, <laughs> okay, cool. Got there. Long story short, man, I end up getting sick, bro. Sick. Like, it, like physically my, sick. Like physically sick because my, my main thing I would tell for folks, because I'm tall, you know, I'm 6'4". You know what I'm saying? I, do I play sports? Nah, not really. Do I watch sports? Nah, not really. You know what I mean? I was more like, Music, beats, media, like that's just my life. You know what I mean? And so, you know, my goal, everybody was, man, you're gonna play ball, you're gonna play ball, you know, you're gonna be a basketball player. And like my go-to line was, no, you know, I wanna, I wanna own the team. They're the ones signing the 90 million dollar checks. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so I know I, I want to be the, you know, I want to be the owner of the team. So it crushed me, man, when I uh started to get sick. Uh called this, um, it was uh, called adult steals. It's a form of rheumatoid arthritis. It's a, what's he call it? Auto, autoimmune deficiency, mm. okay? 
Yeah, man. And uh, they said at this age I am right now, 31, that I'm, I was supposed to be like, like this. Yeah. You know? Not even in a wheelchair, bro. You know what I'm saying? I was saying, I want to supposed to be holding my kids right now. And uh, it's one in a million disease, bro. I don't know how I got it. It's, it's just, it just happened, you yeah. know? And uh, hospital, two months. One month, they trying to figure it out. Gave me some medicine. Came back. It didn't, it didn't work for the, for the week I was out. Came back for a whole nother month. I mean, they pulling out textbooks, trying to figure out, like, what is this? What does dude got? And uh, they finally figured it out uh, with some steroids. And so... I'm here. I'm still here. I'm moving out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can do what yeah, I can yeah, do. Yeah. So it's, you know, I can hold my kids and everything. So it's, it's, it's still a beautiful thing, man. Okay, so, so like, man, that happens in school. And so then like that, that forced you to like leave, leave Southern. Yeah, man. That forced me to leave early on, bro. Wow. Definitely left, left early on. Um, my actually after my first year. So I didn't, it was happening. Some of the symptoms was happening down there, but it was toward the end of it. So toward the end of my first year. So I go home and, you know, get my little summer job, whatever, boo boo. And it just, man, just all the symptoms. It was like, I was had the flu or something. Cause my joints, like I literally couldn't really walk and move. It, it was, it was crazy, man. I don't want to get all, yeah. all extra on here, man. But like, if you see me, man, I got real small, like super skinny. It was crazy. Cause I couldn't eat. And it was, it was, it was crazy, man. Uh, um, that's all I can say. Yeah. I can laugh about this now. I can yeah, laugh man, about it. Exactly, man. You like you just went through it. You like, man, you can't go to your dreams crush, can't go to the college you want to. You got cheated out of eighth grade graduation, man. You get hit left and right. And so then boom. So 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 how long does it take you to get like back to like, you know, normal, I guess. Uh you know what? Was. It normal as far as physically. After they, they get they give you a steroid, a lot of people might know it's called prednisone, is a steroid that they give you. And uh, it started to alleviate a lot of the symptoms. I had like salmon color blotches on my ligaments. It was crazy, bro. Uh, so it took me all of a couple months, a couple months till I was back, but physically, but mentally I wasn't, you know what I mean? Mentally I was drained. Mentally I was there. Like it was times in that hospital where like I could, I couldn't walk to go watch myself. And that one, it was a one day where I could, right? <laughs> it was one day where I could, I did it. And I got and I felt good. And then the, the doctor, young doctor came in, blonde hair. And she just came in just, just feeling good. Just, you know, smelling like herbal essence. And just, hey, how is it going, John? How's it? And I don't know why it just made me so upset that like, it just, I'm not gonna say exactly what I said to her, but it just made me upset that she could just walk freely in here and just be just natural. It just, all of that was in my mind, you know what I'm saying? Even though I wasn't in the hospital, even though it was like, man, I still felt like I was gonna die. You know what I mean? And that was rocking with me for, and <clears throat> that was rocking with me for a long time, even until recently, you know what I'm saying? I just said recently, man, I feel like I'm 19 again. You know what I mean? Just recently, and then all this all this stuff happening, like I just left off from 19, from this happening to that happening to, it's like, whew, like a, even my wife, she said, dude, this is who I fell in love in in college, dude. The guy with the quotes on the wall and yeah, the, yeah, on yeah. the wall. I'm like, so, you know. So then what, so, man, so what was that? So, man, so you go through this, like, that, that you get out of the hospital and then it was like 19 then? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so then like 19, you an adult, like you were just figuring, I'm, I'm imagine you just trying to figure it out. Yeah. How many yeah. Jobs? How many jobs you had? Like, so was it one of those? I feel like we all had those. You know, I started selling knives. And, uh, hey, Petco. I was at that meeting over there on Diver Wait, is that diversity? There's all uh, 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 Irvin Park or something over there. Yeah, there. man. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Oh, dude. What's his guy? Josh Van Dyke. I never forget that guy. Name, uh, so, like, what, what was that like, man? You go 19 and what, what, what you, you trying to do the media still? Was it like, well, you just like job to job, like what, what? Yeah, man, like I say, I was still in an in awkward headspace. You know, it's, yeah. I was the doer. I was a doer in a lot of situations and I, I did. And my mom would tell me a lot, like, man, that's what you do. do. That's what you do different than me. You do it. You said it and you do it. You know what I mean? And I, and I kind of got downtrodden during that time. You know what I'm saying? That tribulation, you know, it does different things for different people, but for me, it was like, man, I built myself up all the way up here, right? 
and it, and it knocked me down. So I just I just tried whatever jobs I can do. So as far as the media, I did still rock with a lot of my partners that did it. You know what I'm saying? And went to studios and recorded people and things like that. And I uh, still had little side jobs, truck driving, you know, delivery. I did this thing called Coffee Unlimited. I delivered to all the under under Wacker Drive. You know what I mean? Right after they did it for Batman. So it was brand new. For, no, no, no. They weren't even finished with the end of it yet. They still had the end to go. And so I, we had to stop and then go around. So I did the Wacker job. That was cool. That, that really opened my eyes to the corporate world at, at, at that point. Like, I'm going to these places, man. They got chefs. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Things like that. So I did the did the truck, truck I mean, delivery driving. And then I really just stuck to driving jobs, period. You know what I'm saying? It was simple. Gave me a task. I did it. I can go over and beyond. Uh, you know, just give me my task. I can do it. Let me go home. And I'm good. So, yeah, man. Just truck driving what jobs. So, so then what made you, like, what happened that was like, hey, man, where you like, you hit this moment, like, I'm tired of doing this. Like, I didn't want to do this. Like, cause then you, you went to a, another boot camp. Like, what was this like? This, well, cause what was you doing before you joined that, uh, that first boot camp? Before I joined Rework, uh, I was working as a forklift operator, which was paying decent money. You know, uh, I got a house, got some kids. Okay, all right. So, you said house and kids, they would put the house and kids. You know what I mean? So, you know, I was a hustler, you know, every job that I got, I was trying to get more money, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get more money and trying to get, you know, trying to take my kids out the country, you know what I'm saying? Trying to have them see different things. Studies show the more the kids see, you know, the more good things they see, that's, that's how they're going to turn. So I'm just like, man, I need my kids to see me elevate more. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be this guy and then, you know, they right here with me, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I got to. I got to keep pushing, you know, every year, every two years, like, okay, what's the next? If I can't grow here, then where can I grow? You know what I'm saying? And so that's why I was getting at, at this company I was at now, uh, before. Uh, they, they put together parts for Ford. Okay. Uh, part is an assembly company, not, you know, they don't just make the car. So went there and the corona happened. And man, I'm, it was two years. It was, it was sweet. You know what? I, it was a sweet gig. I'm not gonna lie to you. <laughs> I was able to do anything because I, I just do, I get my work done and then, you know, I just make sure everything is hit and I'm cool. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Nobody checking you. Nobody like, what John? They like, yeah, hey, you, it's work. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> so yeah. that's, that's, it was sweet for like the two years I was there, man. It was like, hey, John, hey, I need you to, it's, it's done. You know, and I didn't feel like I was growing. I felt like I was just getting too comfortable. And then my pay wasn't increasing and this wasn't happening. I was just felt like this is cool. I, I like going to work. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is all my homies here. You know, everybody's, we cool. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to work to have fun, really. But I wasn't growing. You know what I'm saying? My bank account wasn't steadily growing up. You know what I'm saying? I want a new car. You know, I want to take my kids out of the country to see something I just Florida, Disney World. I want them to go to Africa, Spain, different things like that. So I'm like, man, how can I do this? <clears throat> how can I do this? And I'm thinking, I, I didn't say uh, my wife, me and my wife, we do have a publishing company. And, and she has a, this is one of the, the little her books or whatever. This is a little, a little uh, a banner or whatnot. So we have that publishing company. So that's, you know, that's in my mind too. I'm trying to write a book, by the way, man. I, I am trying to write a book, like at some point, man. Hey, look, gotta, uh, let's, let's talk, man. Gotta, no, she's so, that's, I'm just saying that's 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 in my mind. So, like, I'm not just thinking, okay, I got to get a better business. I'm also thinking, like, how can I how can I scale my wife's business? How can we scale that? You know, thinking about you know offerings. That's click funnels, all this stuff. We don't need to go on through all this stuff. But, however, just thinking, like, how can I? Like, I need growth. How can I grow? And so I was scrolling on TikTok because actually my wife is on TikTok. Uh, she, uh, she, I got on TikTok first, blew up quick, two videos. Me and my daughter was just, it's like this right here. It's me and my daughter sitting here watching somebody, you know, uh, you know, was it affiliate marketing or whatever, right? And it blows up. I get 50, I get 50,000 views one day, 1,400 followers one night. My wow. wife was like, what did you just do? <laughs> I like, wasn't even talking. Like communications and media. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, so uh, she, she ends up doing it and goes crazy, goes viral, million views on her one thing. You might have seen her. She was the one who said, uh, 
how long is sex supposed to really last? You know what I'm saying? So if you've seen her, that was her. And wow. she was on BuzzFeed and everything. So it's crazy. Help me, help me get back to it. Yeah, so I like, so, so much. Like room, right? You like growth, you like growth, man. You looking at growth. Oh, so you know that's why I started talking about TikTok. I started talking about TikTok. So so that's what we own. That's our medium. We was actually on the creative fund getting money. Boom, boom. All right. So I was scrolling one day. I seen uh, a dude. He said, hey, bro, this is where I sit and make 60 grand a year selling software. Yep. What? I want to be at home because I was just doing forklifting 12 hours, 12 hours a night when I was see my kids. So what? Okay, click, clicked it. It turned out to be a boot camp for SDRs. Know nothing about it. Knew about the software and stuff, but knew nothing about this industry and that sales is this important in the industry. And so, man, just I took that course, man. I believe in myself. You know, um, I say, hey, I didn't finish Carbondale, but hey, you know what? I can finish this and start myself off in a new career. And it was a hefty price. For you, you know, we, <laughs> you know, me, and you didn't have conversations about it, man. You know, that, that I'm going to just tell it on here, man. That price, that price, that price is 30 grand is what you got to pay back, right? But it didn't sweat me. You know what I mean? I had decent credit. You know what I'm saying? And, I, I, you know, I was good to go. So I'm like, man, I believed in myself and I believe in those, you know, that's still in my head, those trips I'm trying to take my kids on. And that's in my, I'm like, man, I can do this. My wife was like, you can do it. We read over the whole thing. We can do this. So boom, I did it. Went through the class, man. I finished earlier than most, you know, they say eight weeks, I finished in six weeks and it was a good program, good program. I liked, I think both rework in and pre-hire got me here. Not saying that everyone needs this. You feel what I'm saying? I was new to the industry and I feel like I needed it. I think rework had uh, uh, all encompassing what you need, like the swagger. <laughs> rework has, <laughs> has SDR swagger. You understand me? You know, the culture, bro. You need the culture. <laughs> it, it, I have to explain this to even some of my partners. Uh, okay, I want to have this up in it. Okay, this won't be up in it. I don't know who's going to see all this. <laughs> but I even have to explain to you. You know, I have to be the hub, the black hub. The we know. Hey, the we hub know. for people. Yeah, <laughs> you know, know what I mean? Make Slack groups and, hey, man, you good. Even for David, David, that's in there, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling him. Like, hey, come holler at your boy, man. Anything you need, come talk to me. I got you because, man, I'm overwhelmed. I'm listen, listen, I was you just six weeks ago. And now I'm talking to you. It is so weird that I feel like I'm just already just snapped into mold to teach you how to do this thing. It's crazy. So, I mean, let me just come back. Pre-hire. Great, great work. If I can just compare the, the two, rework, pre-hire and rework. I would say re, uh, pre-hire um, is more like, if you if you've been to college, what's that big classroom? Uh, the lecture hall, you know, pre-hired is like the lecture hall. You know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of people is there's modules that you watch and you get to know these different things. You get your you get hands on uh, uh, with the actual you know, CRMs and sales loss and the automation tools. So you get you get your own license, you know, or their license that you're borrowing to, to touch these tools, to use them and utilize them. And then. I think I didn't take enough. I didn't take advantage of, you know, the, the calling out to people. I didn't call out to people as, as much as I should have, because that is your that is your last assignment. Your last assignment is to be an SDR for mm -hmm. yourself, yeah. which is to start reaching out to the SDR managers, start reaching out to SDRs themselves because they get incentives for bringing on people. Uh, reach out to these people. Overlook the, uh, what is that? The uh, the gatekeepers, what do they call? The, uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the gatekeeper. Like, the yeah, we overlook, overlook them and go straight to those people. Call those people, talk to them. <clears throat> call those people, talk to them. Try to get a meeting. Even if you didn't get a meeting, you got an impression, right? So all that, I didn't take heed to that as much as I should have, you know what I'm saying? Over in rework, man, again, the swagger, he yeah, said, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I, didn't, I didn't take advantage of everything in rework, you know what I'm saying? At all, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, when I did come in, I was like, dang, that's good right there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's real good. You know, and even to the very last, very last, like the keynote speakers for the last day of school, Man, Jared, crazy. I oh, forget the other guy that came in there. 
crazy. It's like what I was going through right then, how to manage her up, you know what I'm saying? Like crazy, insightful, you know what I'm saying? And you might be that person already that just has that manager up in you. You know what I'm saying? For me, I didn't, I didn't have it. So, so, to, so to see, I was, I was able to see it in somebody at my job and, and recognize it. And I was able to, when Jared spoke about it, I was like, man, that's what this guy is doing. You know, he's been boom, boom. So that's what I want to be. I want to be that guy that I reach out to people, talk to people, being, being engaged and asking questions, you know what I'm saying? And just be more insightful and being seen and not just on your own island. You know what I'm saying? I did a lot of that up in uh, up in rework, you know what I'm saying? Because that just wasn't my thing, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I had to step into it and I'm, I'm, mad, I'm mad I missed a lot of opportunities, you know what I'm saying, to to connect with people, you know what I mean? Yeah. But did it pay yeah. off? Like, I mean, so let's talk about what you do now, man. I got to land a plane, but what, 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 so let's talk about did it pay off? Did, did this hard work pay off? Yeah, let's land this. <laughs> let me land, let me land, all right. <laughs> All right. So look, I got two things for me, right? Because I got another call of five minutes, right? Two things for me, right? So land yeah. the plane for me. And the way I want you to end, right? The ending, uh, and we use these for clips, right? I want you to yeah. like talk back to your like younger self. And I want you to be like, you know, like I'm like say like way master, like I'm Shelton Banks. And if you like, man, you struggling, like you think your circumstances that you don't got a shot. Like you wrong. There's plenty of people out here to help you. You just gotta be able to to man get up. And you, whatever you end with, end with, let's get this work. So like, end with get this work, land a plane with get this work. John, I'm talking to you, baby. I'm talking to you right now, all right? Now, you got everything in this world right now to succeed, to win, to get it, to grab it, all right? So whatever you do, whatever you do, make sure you get this work. <laughs> all right. Let's go. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, man. Dude, so what, what, what do you do again? So now what do you do? Just so people know, you went from a forklift uh, operator, you know, to like, man, you still driving forklift? Man, only forklift I'm gonna drive is gonna be for my own company when I get have to rent one. You feel me? So, good stuff, man. All right, cool. Let me stop. Appreciate. It.